Cynical invasion of a neighboring state. Violent siege of power. Despicable occupation and colonization of the foreign territory. <laughs> and total repression of Ukrainians and the indigenous people of Crimea. They quickly started using their traditional methods, repressions. The, the Russian world brought by the Crimean Spring of 2014. Ten years have passed since the beginning of Putin's dictatorship and decay. They cut off all Ukrainian media. Ten years of oppression of rights and freedoms. It's basically an area of disenfranchisement. Ten years of lies, enslavement and human tragedy. I want Putin to be in jail. Neither representatives of the authorities nor Russian propaganda will tell you about this, what and how was and is actually happening on the occupied peninsula. Watch this special report, Crimea, 10 years of slavery. Crimea, the starting point of Putin's anti-Ukrainian aggression. On February 20, 2014, Russia invaded the peninsula of a neighboring state. Its regular servicemen, wearing unmarked uniforms, were blocking the authorities, security agencies and military units. And they were preparing the ground for annexation and then occupation. While the Maidan revolution was still burning in Kyiv and the whole of Ukraine was mourning the murdered by Viktor Yanukovych regime participants of the Revolution of Dignity, the Kremlin was lying about the illegal seizure of power in the capital of Ukraine and realized its criminal plans for Crimea, which it had always called truly Russian territory. This was the first stage of the conquest war, which Putin would continue in February 2022. On February 26, the heroes of the Heavenly Hundred were mourned after former President Yanukovych fled Ukraine. All these shootings, all these coffins carried around Maidan, endlessly singing this morning song. <laughs> It was a very difficult time, in fact, for the whole country, and by and large the Russian Federation took advantage of us when we had basically no government and no army. We saw Russian troops preparing to take over Crimea. We had had a negative experience with Moscow, and it had disastrous consequences. 1944, the total eviction of Crimean Tatars from their land, and almost half a century, 45 years in exile. And before that, the first conquest of Crimea, the displacement of Crimean Tatars. The rallies began. They started to indoctrinate the members of the Verkhovna Rada of the autonomy there. And we received information that on February 26th, they will gather MPs in order to issue an appeal to Putin with a request to accept, so to speak, Crimea into their bosom. They brought their people all over Crimea. Well, not only in Crimea, but also their Cossacks from Kuban. Nearly 4,000 people gathered outside the parliament building. About 10 to 12,000 Crimea Tatars gathered. And Ukrainians with their flags also came out thanks to them. And that's where this clash took place. We managed to push them back. Yeah. <laughs> 
желаемая Москвой картинка, что... The attempt of Moscow to show a scene in which local MPs or part of these MPs voted for the secession of Crimea and asked Putin to protect Crimea was thwarted. And we went home confident that now both the constitutional authorities of Ukraine and the law enforcement agencies were recovering from the shock and taking over because there was already a new government in Kiev. But it turned out that our joy was premature. In the morning of February 27th, the building of the Verkhovna Rada of Crimea and the building of the Council of Ministers of Crimea were seized by so-called unknown little green men. But it was already obvious to all of us at that moment that it was Russian special forces. A total of 110 terrorists. 50 occupied the Council of Ministers and 60 were in Verkhovna Rada. These little green men already started walking the streets. They started smashing signs in the Ukrainian language, removing everything, and they put up a Russian flag. We thought for a long time whether we had done the right thing in leaving the Verkhovna Rada. Although, of course, if they had planned all of this there, it's unlikely that we could have held on. But an agreement was reached between the current Gauleiter Aksyonov and Rifat Chubarov that the issue of Crimea's belonging will not be raised in the Verkhovna Rada. Crimea is Ukraine. And that was the end of it. There was another factor. Somebody from the security service of Crimea called Rifat Chubarov and said that there was going to be a provocation, that there were two people with automatic rifles in the crowd who would open fire to cause bloodshed to provoke and give an excuse for the Black Sea Fleet to intervene to protect Russians. And so, guided by these considerations, they decided to disperse, since, as they said, an agreement had been reached. My battalion was to go to the Angarsky fire range. The task was to protect a park of combat vehicles, and I was also given a tank company to do that. Defending a park is quite difficult. It was necessary to go beyond its territory, and I suggested to the brigade commander at that time, let me set up several block posts on the Simferopol-Yalta highway. This would allow at least to notice them and carry out the tasks of combat protection. But the brigade commander forbade it, shouting that it was not allowed, that we had no right to do such a thing. Then I already realized why he was behaving like that. He was waiting for these guys. The brigade commander was inclining us to treason and said that there was power order there. I realized that the brigade commander had already betrayed us. I went to the office and started talking to my subordinates one by one. First, there were the deputies. Then I called company commanders, then platoon commanders. I realized that all of them, with the exception of the deputy commander for weapons, were on the side of good. We did not give up our weapons. Moreover, I ordered them to cover the barracks with bags of earth and put machine guns out of the window, in case of necessity to keep a circular defense. We had already started to harvest dry rations, food and water. We were preparing for something we didn't know what, but we even dug trenches around the barracks. Then we waited for something. First, we had a command to evacuate families, then to withdraw the brigade's equipment by echelons by railroad, if possible, to get people out of Crimea. The checkpoints had only just begun to be organized there on the way out of Crimea. I took the unit's battle flag and the seal. We found buses, found people who would refuel the buses, because at that time the people who were engaged in the removal of our military from Crimea were already under the pressure of those Cossacks. Thanks to the Crimean Tatars who helped us, we got out. The 36th Brigade, the enemies respect it and fear it. Thank you.
At the beginning of March 2014, the first thing they did was to cut off all Ukrainian media. And in their place, they opened Russian channels. So the people could not even try to understand what was happening. According to all objective studies, less than 50% of the residents of Crimea actually took part in the action which they call the referendum. Accordingly, the number of those who voted in favor of joining Russia was objectively less than 30% if we take it from the entire population of Crimea. Russian researchers in 1214 also questioned the figures demonstrated by Moscow. But nevertheless, we must say that the number of those people who, in general, hoped that there was nothing wrong but the fact that one government had replaced another. They were influenced by the arguments that Russia is an economically stronger state, that it will now make large investments. And while some of the direct supporters of Russia were no more than one-third anyway, a significant part of the local population was indifferent to what was going on, hoping that their personal lives would improve. And as a result, these very people, just this swamp, are sobering up so painfully because they were thinking about the future of their children, about their own well-being. And as a result, Crimea has become a grey zone. There are no investments here, no opportunities. Anyway, they understood the importance and role of the indigenous people. They really wanted the Crimean Tatars to be their allies. On March 12th, when I talked to Putin, he encouraged us to do so. They expected to attract the Majlis to their side, somebody by bribery, somebody by offering some high positions. The other side, which was of the opinion that it was impossible to come to an agreement with these Crimean Tatars, and it was necessary to go straight to traditional methods, through repressions quickly came to this. I had no intention to leave Crimea. I was always traveling between Kyiv and Crimea because I had to attend a session of the Verkhovna Rada. On April 19th, I arrived. And at the border, but there is no border there, someone from the officials drove up and read me a decree that on the basis of this paragraph of the migration law, I am forbidden to enter the territory of the Russian Federation for five years until April 19th, 1219. I said, why are you forbidding me to enter Russia? I have not actually visited your Russia after my release from Magadan if not for your Putin's invitation. I went there once, they say Crimea is also Russia, and I remember saying, well, you're very optimistic if you think so. Be here with five years? That's what I thought at that time. Well, today is 10th anniversary, unfortunately. There was a trial. We argued that the ban was illegal, but then the Supreme Court of Russia confirmed everything, which turned out to be correct. The wording was that I pose a threat to territorial integrity of the Russian Federation. So in 2016, they decided to prohibit the Majlis. I have had a ban on entry to Crimea since April 2014, since I found that the Crimea SOS organization, which is now also an extremist one in the Russian Federation, human rights violations have been and are very numerous throughout the 10 years. It's very important to recall the name of Rashad Ametov. This is the first actual death of a civilian, an activist from Crimea, who in early March, I think on March 2nd, went on a solitary picket in front of the building of the Council of Ministers of Crimea. He was seized by armed men, by the so-called Crimean Self-Defense Unit representatives. These were actually people controlled by the Crimean government. One of the most notorious politically motivated cases on the territory of the peninsula is the so-called case of February 26. Respectively, the figurehead of this case was Ahtem Chigos and Refat Chubarov in the first place as the head of the Majlis. This is also Alek Sensov, who was in Crimea at that time and took part in the protest, as well as Gennady Afanasyev. He, being a great patriot of Ukraine and a man who fought for the right of his little daughter to live in his native land in Crimea, was one of the first to go straight to the front in February 2022.
Я очень долго не... For a very long time, I could not think a word that would reflect the pain, the memory of Hannah. And so many people wrote to me on Facebook that this was the poem which Hannah's struggle started in Crimea with. Where are you now, my people's executioner? Where is your greatness? Where is your strength? On the bright stars and on the calm waters, your black malaise won't fall again. It was the first media appeal by young Crimeans in support of Ukrainian Crimea and a call to fight. Here he was 23 years old. All those who took part in this action were immediately targeted by the FSB and directed rallies and protests. They went to Maidan for a few days and saw everything with their own eyes. And in fact, they came back as different people. They had no doubts about what was right and what was wrong. And here Hannah's words in one interview were like this. He said, it was then that we realized what a coat of arms, a ransom and a Ukraine mean to us. This is a good friend of mine and we all fought for Hannah's release. Him along with Sinsov. Kolchenka and Cherny. It was the famous case of the so-called terrorist group in Crimea, who were detained as well. He had a haircut or salad. And for them, it's worse than a Vashivanka. And they, when they detained him, they dragged him by his hair, pulling it out. This is a photo of letters that I have saved. He saved a lot of letters in prison, and when they show his release, he goes with huge bags. They are full not of belongings, but letters, notes, diaries, testimonies of what they were doing to him. He was recording. With the help of me and other participants in the Crimean terrorist case, the Russian authorities tried to find a justification for their invasion and seizure of Ukrainian territories, but they made a mockery of themselves, letting the whole world see the judicial mess that prevails in their state. As journalists said, he entered the courtroom and everyone expected that he would now start bad-mouthing the guys, saying untruthful information. And he had one hand fastened to the bailiff and the other hand behind him. One could see that he was very worried, the hand was just trembling. And he said that I would draw my testimony, all my previous testimony was given under torture and under force. And the hall, of course, did not expect it, since Sov clapped and shouted, Freedom to Hinadi Afanasyev, glory to Ukraine. For him as a person, it was indeed a feat. It's scary. He realized what would follow, that he would not leave the courthouse, and he would be beaten, tortured, abused again, and that he would go on the court stage in the most difficult conditions. In exchange for stopping his hunger strike, he was allowed to record a video. I am a citizen of Ukraine, and any attempts to impose Russian citizenship on me are against my will. I was born in Samarkand, in Uzbekistan, where my family was deported, or rather my mother's family. They were deported to Tula first, then some of them, the female part, came to Uzbekistan. I'm grateful to this state that I grew up, that I studied there. But nevertheless, the feeling that you are not at home, but a guest, it was present. Since childhood in all our families, wherever you went, the first thing our grandparents told us was about Crimea, what it is like. And the image was already formed. Entering Crimea, step part. I knew less about it, more about the southern coast, mountains, sea, of course. When you get to the southern coast, all parts of the puzzle are in their places. The feeling is difficult to convey because you realize that you are at home. Your relatives, neighbors are Crimean Tatars, and it gave such a power to develop and continue to live and grow up. Mm -hmm. 
Russia always comes and occupies, and occupies not only the territory, but occupies the consciousness, erases it. And we are now facing the fact that our history, our culture, it has been rewritten, it has been interpreted, and it does not correspond to the way it was. In this case, you simply disappear, both physically and mentally. You cease to be a representative of this nation, a Ukrainian, a Crimean Tatar. And this is one of such goals of Russia. Repressions continue. We see constant searches to live in such a state and to realize that in a year, two, three, ten years, you will simply disappear. It is difficult to accept this, and that is why I made the decision to leave. This item is very symbolic. It is a cumin, a ceramic jug from the 19th century, pre-deportation times. It was found in Zolnik, on the territory of the village, which no longer exists. It was used in the ablution ritual. Crimean Tatars are Muslims. They make an ablution five times. All history, all traditions, all rituals are preserved in this object. My friends brought it to me. It was broken completely, and I glued it together, assembled it from the pieces. How did you manage to get it out? Well, yes, there were already these checkpoints. Friends, I went to them, and there was a small period when companies were leaving, taking out property, and they helped me to transport from five to six big boxes under the guise of their property. For 20 years, as soon as we returned from deportation to Crimea, I started collecting different objects, mostly ceramics. This is what I do, and I make costumes as well. And already on the basis of these artifacts we made in 2014, the first protest exhibition which showed what is happening in Crimea in the country and what we are worried about. I have no doubt that we will come back. Our people were deported for 70 years. Our grandparents said they would return, and my grandmother returned. I have many places of strings there. My home is in Crimea. It's the home of my parents. It's in the Simferopol region the Isthmus. This is the road, my favorite road to Crimea, which I had been driving constantly since I moved to Kiev. I don't know when we will enter Crimea, under what conditions all this will take place, if it will be the so-called gesture of goodwill or it will be a withdrawal of occupation troops with total destruction of infrastructure. Most of all, we had miss this sea. The smell, the sound of the water, it's inexpressible. It has to happen. If we want to remain a state of Ukraine and not a federal district, Crimea must be returned. Failure to return Crimea to Ukraine will, in fact, prevent the return of Zaporizhia and Donetsk regions as well. We have already learned to sink their steamships and military vessels. Therefore, they have already realized that Ukraine, not having its own fleet, is able to hit them over the head quite powerfully. So they are afraid of us. The responsibility of Putin and every Russian, both young and old, maybe already exist. I want Putin to be in prison, in a prison like the one Hannah was in. He will not be tortured and he will have better conditions than our political prisoners had and have now. But let him feel on his own skin how to go through all this. 
tribunal. There must be a tribunal for crimes because the fundamental principle of both criminal and international law is the inevitability of punishment for crimes. The seizure of Crimea is the beginning of the disintegration of today's Russia. I do not know in what time frame, perhaps I will not see it, but Russia has repeatedly proved to the whole world that it is not able to develop as such a large state which has dozens of enslaved peoples and territories and which it is purposely destroying. Russia is not able to exist within such borders and therefore it will be collapsed. And the touchstone that started this process of Russia's collapse is Crimea. Uh, этого процесса распада России есть Крым.